Hey guys, I'm Jared with the Experience Southern Illinois podcast. I am joined today by my co-host, Allison Hassler with Southern Illinois Vacation Rentals. And today we are, we're meeting with Hiking with Sean. We're super excited. Um, he hasn't showed up yet. He said he was going to meet us here, but I don't see him in the parking lot. Um, but uh, anyway, what? Sean? <laughs> Lo and behold. Oh my gosh. I should have known. I should have known. <laughs> There's no trail out here. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sean Gossman with Hike with Sean. Thank you for being here today. Howdy, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love that you have the, the howdy, folks. Did yeah. that start before the uh, hiking with Sean Bray? I've always said howdy. And, howdy. And I thought, you know, I, I need to kind of address the audience. Um, so I just said, howdy, folks. You know, that's just. I love it. Kind it's of friendly. Talk and yeah, you know, I try to be friendly. You know? it, em it embodies and, the Southern Illinois and, culture. Make it inviting, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I get in trouble for saying brother all the time. I call people brother all the time. So, um, well, Sean, thank you so much for joining us today, yep. man. This Thanks is, for having me. This is our first episode, so we wanted to start it off right. Um, personally, I have a lot of uh, ties to you. You're the first videos that I watched uh, before I even started exploring down in Southern Illinois. <laughs> so. I was especially excited for this. Yeah. Um, so I like your videos, you know. They're, hey, I wasn't fishing for a compliment, but I, I appreciate it. Yep. I appreciate it. Well, so, Sean, you yes. are you definitely are a local celebrity in our eyes. So for anybody that stumbles upon this video that does not know who you are, tell us about yourself. Uh, I'm a hiking with Sean. Um, I've been started out as a YouTuber, um, just to show videos to family and friends and it turned into something way bigger where I promote the area and uh, promote hiking in Southern Illinois, mainly Shawnee National Forest or state parks. Um, I want people to come visit Southern Illinois. There's a lot in Southern Illinois. A lot of people think there's nothing down here. You know, you think about Illinois and it's just skyscrapers up north and, and flat cornfields everywhere else. And then when you make it down into the Southern region, you know, there's a Everything's down here. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I call it Narnia down here. It is. I, it's I, like I, Narnia. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm from central Illinois, so yeah. I, I say you drive through the closet of uh, cornfields to get down yeah. here, and then you just end up in this different world, this little yeah. tip of the Ozarks yeah. that we have yeah. down here. So, yep. Yeah. I'm from here. You know, I was born in Carbondale, and, and I went to Giant City State Park as a kid, but I never really knew our forest until you know I started hiking and then I was like wow we have we have all this yeah. I mean when was that Sean so when when did you start becoming hiking with Sean so 2016 in December was when I started hiking with Sean and the story of that was I started out as a cyclist and I still am a cyclist and I did it to lose weight and to try to just I was going down a bad road and you know that was to try to save myself and I, I would ride my bike so much I was burning out so I, I would mainly ride Tunnel Hill State Trail and I kept seeing the sign to Heron Pond and I thought it's some sort of like fishing hole you know people go fish there I didn't think nothing of it didn't try to research it well one day I was riding the bike I was bored you know and I thought well I'm just gonna go ahead and drive down that road and just you know see see what it is and I seen that it was a trail, and I thought, I'll park the bike and I'll, I'll just hike it, you know, and see, see what it is. And the boardwalk was out there, the tree, and I'd never seen that before, you know, and I just fell in love with it, fell in love with hiking immediately. It's champion cherry bark, right? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, champion cherry bark oak. I'm just and, smiling because uh, you took my photo out there. The the only time I've gotten my photo in front of the cherry bark oak out there. You oh, were, yeah. The yeah. That, yep, I remember that. That took that photo. But. And... and, and and so that's that's when I thought I'm gonna start putting this. I, I took pictures with an SLR for a while, and I thought, well, I'll just start making videos and showing friends and family, and that's when it all went to what it is today. That's funny. So. That, and what it? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, go ahead. I was gonna say that's <clears throat> and that's how So Ill Cinema started. Is yeah. coming from Central Illinois. I had no idea how beautiful it was down here. Yeah. So it started off like I wanted to show my friends and family. When I'm like. 
selling them on why they should come down here and visit me. Yeah. Um, but then it was just, you know, it was also built out of love for what I was truly seeing. I'm constantly in awe and wonder, especially yeah. because there's still so many spots. You know, I think oh, I've yeah. hit all of the spots and then it's like, yeah, I've hit the main spots, but there's so many little honey holes and oh, stuff yeah. like that, that. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> you don't know until yeah. you start digging in. There's and, a lot. Yeah. So. And, and that's kind of one of the things I do is I create trail guides. Yep. Because the Forest Service has a little bit of information out there. DNR has a little bit of information out there. And then I have guides that I offer for free that take you to the hidden gems. Yep. You know, take you to the spots that... Um, that you got to see, you know, you got to see to fall more in love with the forest. Where, so. can, where can you find those guides and uh, stuff? On like my that? website, hikingwithshawn.com. Okay. Just go to trail guide. There's a tab for trail yeah, guides in yeah, there. Yeah. That's awesome. Because that's, you know, I was talking to somebody with SIU Forestry recently, mm -hmm. and she was asking what are the barriers that people have to coming to Southern Illinois, to going to the Shawnee National Forest and stuff. And, I think one of it is just not knowing what to expect when you're getting on the trail. Getting lost. I mean, they're, yep. they don't know where to go. So There's, We're not good about signage. Yeah, you know, signage is a weakness. For sure, for sure. And that's why I think that your page has been such an asset in Southern Illinois because I, I would watch your videos if I was like, okay, I saw a really cool picture over at Kincaid Lake or, you know, yeah. something like that. Yeah. I would look on and say, okay, has Sean <laughs> gone here? What's yeah. the guide look like mm -hmm. for that? Yeah. And then I would know exactly what to expect when when going on those. So it's awesome. I feel like you inspire a lot of people to yeah. get outside. And, 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 and with my guides, you know, I try to, which is helpful to you, you know, I try absolutely. to put lodging, local lodging near that site. So yep. if, if I was making a guide about Cedar Bluff up here, you know, I would make sure I mention, you know, Rock Ridge um, or, or any other lodging. You know, I don't try to compete you know i just put it all out there so people can see it and then where to go eat yep you know so it's it i want to get people into the forest i want to get people in these parks but i also want people to spend money locally yep. you know mom and pop lodging dining shopping that's what makes southern illinois unique you know get away from these fast food these chains yep. and do these mom and pops and if more people see that They'll, they'll go, I want to make a mom and pop company too. And then, you know, we're the next uh, Eminence or, or Branson or, or uh, um, Bentonville, Arkansas, yeah. Bloomington, Indiana. All those places have all these unique places to go eat, shop, stay, oh, along yeah. with all the outdoor recreation. Yep. And, and that's my mission. Yeah. You know, I don't make a whole lot of money, but my mission is tourism. So. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's, that's my mission. And there's 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 one thing I've been fascinated about coming from a small town in central Illinois is uh, I, I say it's very much the same kind of community where people have each other's backs. Like there's you know if somebody gets sick in a community, people are raising money, doing fundraisers, doing GoFundmes mm -hmm. um, to help out and stuff like that. I say it feels a lot like back home, just way prettier views down yeah. here than it is yeah. uh, in, in central Illinois, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think you've built a good community on your social media as well, too, of not just showing off the, the park, but also, like, how to enjoy it responsibly, how yeah. to enjoy it safely. Um, you're big on not leaving anything behind. Right. Um, what's some of the stuff that you've done as far as, because I've seen you do a lot of stuff, conservation and, and stuff like that. I've gone out hiking with you. Yep. and. I mean, if there's a piece of trash on the ground, you and yeah. Michelle, you guys race each other to get a trash yep, bag yep. to start picking up trash on the trails, and it's just... It's, and, yeah. and, and with that, you know, tourism, when you bring visitors into Shawnee, into the state parks and all that, from out of town, not all of them, but some of them are going to be sloppier people, yep. and, and they're going to litter, you know, they're going to leave their trash behind and whatnot. That's going to happen. We're not going to stop that. We can educate and help reduce it, but we just need people to go out there and clean the trash up. And I, I'm fine doing that. I bring a lot of people here, um, and I'm fine going out there and getting their trash. Yep. And then educating them. You know, if I'm out there picking up trash, you know, a little kid with a parent might see it and be like, that's cool, and he'll come up and bring me a piece of trash he found. I'm going to give him like a High Point Sean sticker or something like that, you know. Yeah, try to make a day. Yeah, positive reinforcement. Yeah. I, I, I carry them, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, we, we clean up every time we go hiking. We always, you know, everyone 
puts these bags in another bag and hangs them up on the you know the counter and we put them in our pack and pick up trash along the way and uh, and I guess I can kind of talk about this now I just recently signed a permit with Forest Service to start doing group hikes where we go on group hikes for the intentions of cleaning up trash oh congratulations that's, awesome. that's amazing yeah, yeah. So yeah. I call it hike for trash hike for trash yeah. I love it, man. You'll definitely have to show up. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's going to compete with my daughter's third grade project, which was smash that trash club. There you go. <laughs> so, and it was very a, similar. I not see a collab. I see a yeah. collaboration here. <laughs> yeah, all about that. That's yeah, awesome. so you mentioned the trash, which I think in a lot of, in a lot of sense... Those that are not familiar with the Shawnee National Forest, which I, I can attest to because I get a lot of uh, newcomers to the yeah. area staying at my properties, and they really think that it's going to be like going to a state park, like going to Giant City where there is an entrance, and then it is all manicured, and we have right. Right. trash cans at every corner for yeah. you, and you know guides and park rangers mm -hmm. there to answer your questions. But that's not really... The Shawnee, that's not a national forest. So can you speak to that and what those differences are between a national forest of what we have right. for the most part and then what a national park would be right. or even our state parks that we have nearby? Yeah, and, and a lot of people, when they come to Shawnee, they always say, oh, I had fun at Shawnee National Park. And it's easy to say that. It's easy to call it a park because especially if you go to national parks, mm -hmm. Shawnee is, is a national forest, which is way different than a national park. A national park, like you said, it manicures everything and makes it park-like where it puts a lot of uh, central focus on the tourist and making sure they can hike the trails, get to the trails, um, leave no trace easily with trash services. Rangers are walking around, you know, giving them out information. They'll put booths up and all that. You could see that just right across the river in Eminence, you know, Current River. You know, that's a national park, a national riverway. And you'll be out in the middle of nowhere, and there'll be a ranger booth, you know, where they're telling you information about the park. And the Shawnee, we're a national forest, and that's more of a rugged, wild um, public land. It's like a, kind of more like a, a BLM, you know, the Bureau of Land Management out west, where it's just long swaths of property that you can access, but there's just no services. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Shawnee National Forest, how it's different than the state parks that are more tourist tourism park centralized where the forest is more rugged and, and wild and, and and that's a good thing we, we need we need parks we need national parks but we need forests and wilderness because they kind of let the area turn into what it was before we came and cut it all down <laughs> yeah. yeah so that's awesome so um you I mean, even since we've been here, you've pointed out like three different plants and like know, you know, what they're called, where they come from. Like we, I noticed something that growing on a plant earlier and you're like, that's a, a goal. Yeah, yeah, a goal. Yep. Yeah. I know a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mainly it's Michelle who teaches me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so I've, I've gotten the chance to hike with you and, and Michelle and I've I've seen personally she slows you down yeah, a yeah, little bit not yeah. in a bad way no 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 in a good way to yeah. where I, and I think it's easy as content creators um, to focus on the content to focus on you know what is the camera scene and right, stuff like right, that yeah, yeah. and just even in the short amount of time that we've gotten to hike together we're, we're at Heron Pond I remember <laughs> there was a frog that was so tiny sitting yeah. on this leaf and she saw it. she even pointed to it and i still couldn't see it until she like yeah, yeah. got up on she's, it and pointed to it she she sees stuff you know um she'll see all the little snakes and little frogs and mushrooms and stuff like that i, I always tell her you know she's low to the ground and she's looking and i'm way up <laughs> in the clouds you know? <laughs> that's awesome um, but i've been trying to kind of slow down and look at it being being as tall as i am you know i'm long-legged so i take big strides and steps um, and I walk a little faster than a lot of people do and you know I also got to remember that when I do group hikes because you know I'll be walking and then I'll look and everyone's way behind me <laughs> but, you yeah. know, it's like I'm the leader you know I need to slow down so yeah. but since I've been with Michelle you know um, I've been able to learn a lot by slowing down I think that everyone needs to do that when they get out and hike the trail slow down and 
kind of look around, you know, and learn something. You know, if you see a plant, take a picture of it and then go home and research it. Yep. You know, and then the next time you're out and you see another plant or a flower or something, take a picture of it and go home and research it. Just learn as, learn as much as you can. You know. I think kind of on the topic of <clears throat> slowing down to just time in southern Illinois, I think a lot of people think that southern Illinois is like a weekend destination. Yeah. And I think I think there are places you can visit in a weekend, but I sure. think, man, I mean, you could spend an entire weekend at Bellsmith Springs, oh, just yeah, one sure. small inch of yeah. Shawnee National Forest, <laughs> or one weekend at Garden of the Gods, where there's way more than just the observation trail. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. and uh, there, <clears throat> you know, you get into the wilderness of Garden of the Gods, and there's just you can do three-day hikes. I yeah. mean, there's so much trails out there. Yep. You know, three-day long hikes if you want to. Yeah, they're not making a plug for it. Uh, Southern Illinois vacation rails, but yeah, yeah. it's a great place to spend a week. Yeah, you know? yeah, you know, there really is, and there's a lot of A month, it's yeah. a great place to you live. You know, I've been on the website and looked at all the places. I've stayed in quite, a, you know, a few of them, and there's a lot of them, and there's unique ones. That's what I like about, you know, the, the properties because there's unique places to make your experience in Southern Illinois even better. You know, the dome home. Yeah. Um, yep, you know, I, I tell everyone it's like a UFO. Yeah. You know, that's what <laughs> I feel like I'm being abducted, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a romantic UFO. Rustic, <laughs> rustic hideaway cabins. Is that part of yours? No, that one's okay. not. Okay. You know, but, but there, there's others. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and that, I mean, there's tree houses. lake houses. Yeah, the tree, tree houses. Yeah. Yeah. Cabins. Yeah. Like it's. I it, mean, and, and that's what's cool too. And what I've noticed is I'm trying to capture just how diverse Southern Illinois is and the things that you can do down here. Mm -hmm. And I still, it's one of those things where I feel like I'm just scratching the surface. I feel like oh, I've yeah. got so much content, but I still just feel like even within that, you know, yeah. I was I was at the uh, McAllister uh, mule right. ride that they yep, had the at ride. High Knob yep. yesterday. And uh, it, uh, I didn't plan on bringing this up, but I was so touched because I, I just showed up that morning. Mm -hmm. I have like three or four people now that are like, anytime you want to ride a mule, you let me know. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Just yep. the most That's generous awesome. people. But yep. um, there was a group, I, I want to say there's over 200 of them at dinner last night. They invited me to yep. dinner and they had raised, uh, they told me over $16,000 for people within their camp that were uh, battling cancer. Right, um, right. There was two different families that that money went to. And yeah. It's just like I, they, you know, I was sitting there and I'm like, this is what Southern Illinois is about. This is yep. what I see when I think of Southern Illinois. I think of communities coming together. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and Anthony uh, McAllister, who runs that, you know, he's a good guy. He brings a lot of tourism. You yeah. know, and these people are coming from all over the country, a couple from different countries, and yeah. and pulling their mules and their wagons, or eating our food, or staying at our horse camps, which are helping. You know, and then some of them are staying elsewhere. And, yep. I mean, and it's, that's just one small subsection of what you can do in Southern Ireland. Yeah, there's oh the, yeah. The Dirty yeah. South that you yeah. were just in not long yep. ago, bike riding. There's yep. zip lining we have zip down lining. here. There's What's one of your favorite uh, recreational activities to do? So aside from hiking, you know, biking is definitely, um, you know, going to Tunnel Hill State Trail. We have a... Uh, if you count the entirety of the trail, including what Harrisburg owns, it's it's about 55 miles in length, um, and it's you're totally protected. You know, you got some road crossings and whatnot, but you, you got trestles you can go across. You got a 500 plus foot tunnel you go through, and you get tunnel vision. Yep. You know, um, we have mountain bike trails. You know, in between Dixon Springs and Lake Lindo, we have nearly 20 miles of just beautiful single track mountain bike trails a touch of nature um aside from biking kayaking i love kayaking we have so many places to kayak if you want a river kayak on the big rivers we have two of the biggest rivers in the country mississippi and ohio right there if you want to get on the smaller rivers like big muddy uh, bay creek uh, cash river you know we have we have all them i like lakes yeah i, I like the water to be calm so lake glendale um Dutchman Lake, um, Glen o Jones Lake. Glen Those o are Jones some is of my one. favorites. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah and with that, yeah. you got state parks, Glen o Jones, Giant City, Fern Cliff. Um, there, there's a lot to do here. You can climb. Rock climbing. Rock yep. climbing. Yeah. I mean, 
I'm, I'm sure I'm missing some. A lot of equine stuff, mule ride. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, Giant City State Park's got the... Yeah, uh, Bear Branch, you can go there. You can go to Giant City uh, Stables and rent horses. Um, there's a lot to do here. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of sightseeing. If, you know, if you, you have mobility problems, you can't get out. You can drive to places and see mm-hmm. stuff, you know. That's with, what, without getting out of your vehicle, you can drive to some of the prettiest waterfalls. Burden Falls, pull into parking lot, see the Upper Falls, Bork Falls. Bork Falls right you know, there off the You road. drive right through it, you know. Uh, Iron Furnace, yep. you can drive to it and look at it. You know, there's there's a lot of cool places to do, uh, to see, to go to, if, if you can't get out anymore, you know. So it's something for everyone. Yeah, yeah, I have a lot of friends who have little ones, and it's yeah. awesome that we have a lot of trails that are great for little yeah. ones, like oh. Fern, Fern Cliff. Fern Cliff and Giant City are just perfect. Yeah. yeah. Small yeah. kids. A know. lot of them are, you know, Fern Cliff is almost just like a flat walk yeah. to that, uh, to the big waterfall yeah. there. And, yeah. 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 So what would your favorite places to go that are, what we would probably say would be best for limited mobility so we're looking at either just jumping out of the car and taking taking it in which Mm -hmm. you already said most of it so we can cut that out and put it in front (laughs) but if you have anything to add yeah i mean those for sure um fern cliff of course you know big big rocky hollow waterfall you just pull in park and walk less than you know eighth of a mile or so and you're right there and if you're in a wheelchair, you can even wheelchair to it. Post Oak Trail at Giant City, that's ADA approved. It's mm. wheelchair accessible. Um, they rebuilt it to, to be ADA approved. That's awesome. Um, Carbondale has some nice, um, easy to access greeneries. Um, you know, the state parks are big. And then all our little hidden hidden gems, uh, Dixon Springs State Park. Yeah. You mm-hmm. can drive to it and see the, the spillway. Yep. It's a beautiful waterfall. You don't have to get out of your vehicle to see it, you know. Yep. Um, so stuff like that. Yeah, sure. Burden Falls is that way. You can see that top shelf. Yeah, Burden Falls. Burden, right Burden from Falls. The parking and, lot. and it's amazing, you know, to see it. Um, and you can just drive down the road in front of this place here, and even though it's private property, you, you can see Draper's Bluff here behind us. Yep. And yeah. right from the road, if you if you're into photography and you don't want to leave your vehicle, you can get a spectacular long range shot. Yeah, of Draper's Bluff, just right from your vehicle. Yeah, yeah. and that's it's what you know. There's huge. so it's not <laughs> even it's not even some some of the coolest stuff I've seen in Southern Illinois was even on like private property yeah. and stuff mm-hmm. like yeah. that. You know, we got the state parks, we got the national forest, but yeah. there's I mean, there's a lot of property down here that right. people own that you know it's like living in a fairy tale. It yeah. feels like yeah. some of the backdrops mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So now, I know you have a lot of followers because when I was coming here and I told my husband I said yeah Jared and I are going to be interviewing hiking with Sean Sean (laughs) Osman and he goes oh yeah I know Sean I watch all of his cave videos so (laughs) so it kind of caught me off guard I'm like oh I didn't know that you watched his videos so so my husband has watched all of your cave videos I didn't really realize that we had so many caves in southern Illinois can you speak on that yeah, we, so we have a lot of caves, um, a lot of karst in southern Illinois. Now, most of them um, in this region are, are blocked off. You can't go into them. Mm-hmm. It's to protect bats. Mm-hmm. One of these days, I, I hope the Forest Service reopens them because white nose, which is what bats get, is declining. So the caves are to so the they're point. getting healthier? Yeah, they're getting healthier. Good. and. and we need to let tourism back into the caves, in my opinion, um, and hopefully they'll do that one day. Uh, not too far from here, which is still more or less in southern Illinois, is Illinois Caverns. Waterloo. Waterloo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's like the top of southern Illinois. Yep. And you can go in there, and there's six miles of wild cave that you can explore. Wow. It's day use only, so you only got a certain time. We've, we've been able to explore about three miles a day, but it's amazing. Yeah. I mean, to see it all. It's a cave, but there's no tour guide. You're squeezing through stuff. You're getting in water up to here. Yep. It's cold water. You know, it's 50-something degrees all year. You know, you wear, a, you, if, if, if it's too cold, you can wear a wetsuit or something like that. Um, I brave it and I'm freezing the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> 
but you know? it's cool. It's an experience. Yeah. And, and it's and it's even though it's not south of 13 or, or this centralized southern Illinois, it's still at the top of southern Illinois and yep. worth the visit, you know. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, it's not and just... After you stop there, keep going south. Yep. You know? Yep. There's more. <laughs> well, and you, you brought up what you were wearing down there in the cave, and yeah. you've got this backpack on, and oftentimes when we go hiking, I just feel underdressed constantly. <laughs> um, but you are, are well prepared every time you go yeah. out on, on your hikes. What are some essentials, you think, for Southern Illinois for hiking, what people should have prepared? So essentials, talk about essentials, is... I have a guide on it on my website, REI has it, and it's usually the 10 essentials. Mm -hmm. And I won't go into that, you know, too much detail into that, but at least bring more water and food than you'll need. Yeah. Because you never know, you can get out there and you see something off trail and you're like, I want to go look at that. And then all of a sudden you lose the trail and it's nighttime yeah. and you don't know how to get out. You want to have food and water. Yeah. You know, if, if it's wet and there's creeks, you want to have a water filter. You can get one at Walmart really cheap, plug it into your faucet at home, make sure it works, make sure you know how to use it, and then ta-da, you got a water water filter, and you can filter creek water and drink it, and you know, it's safe, you know. Um, bring a flashlight. You got your flashlight Yep, right got a here. flashlight. Yep. I got a spare headlamp. Okay. Little little hack I do with the headlamp is I turn the batteries wrong side. Just in case it activates in my bag, it doesn't mm. run the battery oh, down. smart. You know? Life hacks. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Um, flashlight's good. A pocket knife. Yep. In case you do get stranded and you need to cut twigs and little pieces of wood to kind of make, make a fire. Yep. You'll want a source to make a fire. You can bring a lighter, but I would suggest waterproof, windproof matches. Yeah. You know? Um, they typically do you better if it's raining or anything like that. Yeah. Um, you can bring, uh, I carry a rain poncho. It's like a little pocket size emergency oversized rain poncho. So if it does rain, you can use it. Or if you need shelter, you got shelter. Nice, that's smart. Uh, those shot blankets, you ever seen them? They're mm -hmm. like silver. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, that'll keep you warm. With the warmth? Yeah. I mean, it'll keep, it'll, it's something. Yeah. If you're hiking in the winter, bring some extra layers. You know, you can get really uh, thin, insulated, like running tights that they wear running and that's extra layer that you can put on if you're freezing cold you know or if your stuff gets wet yep. you know that's mm -hmm. made for runners to wear alone so it'll keep you warm if that's all you know get a shirt and, and extra socks and stuff like that it'd be neat throw it in there it doesn't weigh very much um so yeah just the basic stuff first aid kit yeah uh, i always recommend a first aid kit only keep supplies in there that you know how to use you know, Smart. You don't need a trauma kit, but. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, I didn't realize it that. It lets was everyone on. know that, you know, this is a, a podcast, but it's, it's a real world. That's right. This <laughs> is real. These are real people <laughs> with real phones. Yeah. Okay. So sorry. We're busy. We're busy yeah. people. <laughs> um, you have, uh, you're, you're a man that wears many hats. I did not realize this, but not only are you. Shakespearean in your videos talking about where you're at you write you write you do some blogs mm -hmm. is that right yeah I didn't prepare you for talking <laughs> talking right. about <laughs> this but I think this is fascinating I've seen a lot of your guides and just how thorough you are mm -hmm. and when did your when did your knack for writing develop so writing um I used to hate writing I I, I, I uh my my early life is I quit high school and eventually got a GED because I wanted to get out of coal mining and do something good with my life. So I got a GED and I thought, well, I'll get an associate's degree and that way it's better than all I have is a GED, you know. Well, I kind of fell in love with school. So eight years later, I got two master degrees. I'll always pay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I have one of them's an MBA and, you know, and I have another one. Um, and I, I did a lot of riding. Yep. And I hated riding until about the last two years. And then I got good at riding. Then I liked riding. Well, then I started blogging and riding with that. And that made me fall in love with riding more because I was writing about topics that I like to write about. And now, you know, riding to me is a stress reliever yeah. when I'm not hiking. Mm -hmm. 
And when I get rider's block, I can go for a hike, which I'm going to do anyway, <laughs> and then rider's block is gone. So when I write, you know, I write articles that are 1,500 words to 15,000 words, you know. Yep. And I really enjoy writing. And the blog has helped this area. You know, I write guides, and I write a lot of top 10 listicle-type articles, you know, where to go do this if you have kids, where to go eat, where to go stay, you know, stuff like that. So I'm sure that you have some analytics on your website. What are some of the most popular blogs that you've noticed that people gravitate towards? So my gear um, blogs get a lot, and waterfall guides, anytime I release a waterfall guide, um, they get quite a bit. People love the top tens. Mm -hmm. uh, anything to do with, you know, I released one uh, the other day. It's a top ten um, place restaurants in southern Illinois. Mm -hmm. And in 24 hours, I think it got 5,000 views, something like that. Wow. So people people like that. How, you know. how tough was it to pick your top ten favorite restaurants So, so in it, it was tough, but I also put... In the beginning of the blog, in the end, that this is not the top ten best. Yep. These are some of the best. Yeah. Because I don't want to make anyone <laughs> yeah. sad. In, the, you know? this, in this <laughs> moment, with this appetite, this is what yeah. this is yeah. the list you that know? you're getting and, right and, now. And I put on there in the comments below. If you have any, if you have any other suggestions, please tell them. Yeah. And invite the world to see it. That way, I don't single anyone out. Sure. You know? But I try to only list places that I've been to. Yeah. And I try to go to a lot of places. You know? So if restaurants are upset that they didn't make the list, but you've never been there, they can always invite you out. Yeah, and, yeah, you they know, can. And, yeah, maybe, yeah. Um, yeah. and they can contact me and <laughs> yeah. say, hey, you know, you ought to come by my place, such and such, and if you like it, you could write about it or something. Yeah. Um, they're Wiffle Boys Pizza, you know. <laughs> You're like the spokesman over there, Gorville. aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I went in there one day because I, I ate and I liked it, yep. and I put it in articles about Ferncliff and places around mm -hmm. there. And I went in again, and they're like, hey, you're hiking with Sean. A lot of people come here because of you. you oh, know? And awesome. they gave me stickers, and, <laughs> and the owner comes up every time he sees me. Where'd you hike today? You know, And he's like, hey, I don't know if I gave you a sticker yet. And he's giving me a lot of stickers. Yeah, I put awesome. one on my truck. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. It helps that Chris the food's awesome. Chris is a friend awesome. of ours. I was going to yeah. say. Yeah, awesome. yeah, he's a fun guy. I mean, he he's a, I, I like him a lot, you know. He, he makes some great pizza, too. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. and usually when I see him, um, he'll ask me where I'm hiking and I'm like spacing off because I'm hungry and we just got done hiking <laughs> yeah. and then Michelle always goes oh it's such and such place and I'm, I'm thinking hope he thinks I'm like not oh uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah a little hangry a little yeah, bit yeah a little bit <laughs> nice guy and, uh, and that was fun you know it's fun when people tell me hey you know you've brought people to my business I'm not looking for freebies. They don't have to pay for my food or anything like that. But I just, I love hearing that. that yeah. You know, I'm, I'm getting people over there because that's the goal. Yeah. You know, that's the mission. Well, and I, I feel like, you know, I, I can speak personally to how you've impacted, you know, my life and helping me break down, like we talked about earlier, breaking down that barrier and getting me into the Shawnee National Forest and hiking. What's your favorite story of somebody that you've impacted, a business you've impacted, a life that you've impacted from the work that you've done? Well, I mean, but, you know, there's different people. Uh, I'm not going to say his name, but there's a fellow that, you know, is from another state, and uh, he said he was having a lot of trouble dealing with his um, recovery from alcoholism. And, you know, it was my videos and all that that kind of kept him out of that. And that meant a lot to me. Yeah, um, very cool. Well, what made me take hiking with, with Sean serious uh, from what it started out just to show videos was I would get these emails from, from older folks who either don't live here anymore or they're too, uh, their mobility's not good enough to let them come outside anymore. And they'd say, hey, you went to this place and... I used to live there and I grew up there as a kid before it was a forest and I forgot all about it until I seen your video and all these memories came back that I thought I'd never get, you know. Yep. And you, if you get a couple of emails like that oh. and you're like, yeah. I'm going to do whatever I can to make this to make this work. Yeah. And that really, you know, amplified it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like if you are like if I didn't have a wholesome reason behind why I was doing this before, you know, yeah. you definitely do. I had a, 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 a similar situation a guy tell me that he he was a 
uh, a veteran and he wasn't yeah. able to hike anymore but this is where he grew up and mm -hmm. he was reliving his childhood through the videos I yeah. was making and stuff yeah. like that and I just remember yeah. in that moment I'm like this is this is really making an impact on yeah. other people's lives and yeah. Yeah. you don't realize that when you're no. going out on a hike you're like man I need to lose weight you know you're talking yeah. about yeah. I need yeah. to lose weight I need yeah. to go out and do this stuff but and, just, and you know my story uh, before this was grim um, you know I, I was 350 pounds I, I chain smoked you know I smoked two and a half three packs a day and I was a heavy heavy drinker because I was in pain you know I had a lot of dental problems so I drank to make the pain go away and I was just going down a bad road you know my 20s were uh, 20s were the hardest times of my life you know health wise 30s been the best you know I'm 39 I'll be 40 this year I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. You know, the big 4-0 doesn't bother me. Yeah. Um, looking forward to it. Looking forward to 50s. You know, I'm going to be in better health. If, if I was still doing what I was doing before, I wouldn't have made it see COVID. You know, yeah. I'd have died long before that. I mean, I was going down a, a wow. pretty, pretty bad road, you know. Yeah. And uh, hiking and biking saved me. The Shawnee saved me. Yeah. So it saved my life. You know. And I've I've heard you mention that stories in different. Uh, I think there's blogs that you've written. Right, and there's right, yeah. other stuff that you've written. And I've always been. I've I, you and I have talked about podcasting and stuff mm -hmm. for over over a year now. Mm -hmm. um, but I I've always thought that that part of your story is probably um, what I feel like is the most impactful. Is there are people who are probably in that exact same yeah. spot right now yeah. and feeling like. Yeah man, how can I get out of this mindset? How can I get, and there's something that happens when you get out in the woods yeah. and you're just, you're just hiking. You're just, I, I don't know. There's something about getting out every day where I'm like, we get to do this. This is. Yeah. It's something bigger than you. You know, we're, we're very used to, to modernism that we live in technology and everything like that. And even if you get out here with cameras, you know, it's still, you know, everyone's always looking for rock art yep. in, the, in the Shawnee because it's old. And it's so old that it's before us. The rock art that's out there is, is 5,000 years old. And that's amazing. Yep. And it's cool. But the oldest thing in the Shawnee is exactly what we're sitting on. Yep. These, these big rocks. The bluffage. The bluffage. The bluffage. <laughs> that's, you know, my made-up word. That... You have made it so long in this podcast <laughs> yeah. without even saying that's yeah, honestly, bluffage. that's impressive. I gotta say it once. <laughs> There's probably people out there making bets. I'm yeah, like, how yeah, long is yeah. it gonna be before he says the word bluffage? Someone yeah. told me once that they uh, watch my video with their girlfriend or whatever at night and they play a drinking game and every time I say bluffage, they <laughs> take a shot. And... and I can't handle shots, so yeah. I, I know that they're plastered. Yeah. I mean, but, uh, but this is this is the oldest thing out here. We could touch it. We could sit on it. Yep. This has been here longer than humans. Yeah. Longer than dinosaurs. Yeah. That's something to think about. It but, is. You know. It is. Yeah. So. Were you talking about your your pre your former self mm -hmm. and how you are so much healthier now yeah. from the Shawnee and you even said that you the Shawnee saved you yeah. if you were talking to somebody in your shoes from 10 15 years ago and they were saying yeah Sean I would love to do what you're doing I would love to hike all the time but I I've never hiked before in my life I'm scared I don't know what to do mm -hmm. I feel like I'm too out, out of shape or this or that what would you tell that person I'd tell them to go to state parks, go to Giant City, Fern Cliff, even Fort Massac that has a little walking path, Tunnel Hill. Yep. Start with the easy trails, the easiest trails you can find, and just hike them back and forth, you know, get to know them, get used to them, start looking at plants, try, try to make it, basically you don't want to just walk and think about the fact that you're, you're exercising, it hurts mm -hmm. too much, you know, you're, you're in bad shape. Just go for a hike, start studying the plants, get really good at that trail, and then eventually you're going to be like, I think I can do another one. And then go for a harder trail. Start out easy, as easy as you can, and just keep moving up. Yeah. Don't get in a rush. There's, it's not a competition. You don't have to... Um, just getting out and walking in nature is, is doing so much for you 
health-wise, aside from the cardio experience you're getting, you're breathing in fresh air. You know, you're not walking in an area where there's fumes and gas and everything. Um, you're because we're looking at everything, because there's so much to see out here. You know, and we want to make sure we watch our steps and don't trip. We're really utilizing our brain power, and that's really good for you. You know, that uh, prevent you from getting Alzheimer's and everything like that. You know, if you really yeah, utilize you're, you're that challenging brain. yourself. Yeah. You know, yeah. when you challenge yourself, then yeah. you you're staying sharp. And yeah. I can definitely see that. And then once you get into the bigger stuff, the hills and, and the rugged hikes, that's that's your exercise. I mean, yeah. if, the, if all you want to do is hike, that's fine. You know, you need to eat better and all that, you know, make healthy decisions outside of hiking. But hiking alone is probably all the exercise you'd need. Oh, you know, yeah. Really. Yeah, especially that Pack and Tuck Loop. That hill yeah. all the way back <laughs> up from Pack and Tuck Loop. Was, yeah, there's a lot of... That's an exercise. <laughs> yeah. If you don't feel exercise after that, <laughs> then you should yep. sign up for a marathon or something. Yep. So, awesome, awesome, man. Well, I, I you burned through, I, I, and and we want to bring you on back on as well yeah, too. So sure. I don't want yeah. to ask you if I asked you all the questions, we'd be here till tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a lot. And yeah. you look stoic right now. I feel like you're sitting higher than <laughs> us. Like it feels like. We're here to be taught about Southern Illinois from, from you, but no, yes, I mean, I'm I, I, kind of tall. You know, one thing I've yeah, one thing I've how tall are you? I'm six five. Six five. Wow. So, uh, what, what I like to tell people is I have one addiction that I was never able to quit, and that's coffee. You coffee. Know, I can remember <laughs> drinking coffee. They say it'll stunt your growth. My first memory of myself, I was drinking coffee. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so they say that it stunts your growth. So I just imagine where I'd be today. You would have been seven foot tall, if I yeah. Drink eight cups of coffee a day, you know. <laughs> There's hope for eight year olds drinking yeah, coffee out there. there. <laughs> yeah. Well Sean, thank you so much for yeah. spending time with us today and yeah. letting the letting our audience, our new audience, uh, listen in to what your audience has been able to hear from you in the past. How many listeners do you have? So it varies on different networks. Um, on Facebook is my biggest, and I have, You're I think I'm, I'm close to, I'm getting close to 16,000. Are you? Wow. Yeah. You were just um, at 13 not too yeah, long ago. Yeah, it was, it's really kicking up. Not that I'm paying attention to your followers yeah, yeah. or anything like that. <laughs> Instagram, 6,000. Um, X or Twitter, um, like almost 6,000. I'm on that. Uh YouTube, almost 6,000, but I'm getting a lot of, lot more views than I am uh, mm -hmm. subscribers. Mm -hmm. I've, yeah. I've recently hit over a million views. Yeah. So a million. That's awesome. A million views. I mean, yeah. That's, that's, that's crazy. Great. That's you know, nuts. That, um, I, I'm from a town called Hearst. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of it? Yes. Yeah. It's just a little town by Carbondale. And there was maybe 700, 500, 700 people that live there. So the, to think that, you know, 15,000 people are following me on Facebook, you know. Kids from a town of 700. From a, yeah, it's bizarre. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's kind of weird, you know. It's a weird. And I'm not like a, a 1.2 million follower, you know, YouTube. But most of the people following me are local or people who want to visit this area. And that's yeah. good enough for me, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember when I reached over the amount of people in my hometown in a video yeah. one time and i'm like this is a landmark right yeah. here like, it's gonna be a more, poor memory yeah, yeah i reach more people than my hometown which is it's cool man you're making I, a huge yeah i and i've i've had viral things when i stayed at the yeah the, the dome shawnee. home yeah mm -hmm. the shawnee glamping i shared it and then it got shared hundreds yeah um they got shared so much and got so many views and so many new followers and whatnot, that they were doing a competition and all these scammers came out and mm -hmm. made fake competitions. So I, sh I got them so many views, the scammers even. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think that's kind of funny, and not funny, but you know, just a little funny that, it's a double and it just sword. blew up. Yeah, yeah and I have, I've had a few of them. You know, I asked the right question on social media and it just gets blown up and shared. And yep. some, sometimes I get, you know, there's haters, you know, you've yep. had to experience some. Um, my haters are like one percent. Yeah, you know and that's the way I look at it. You know, I'm gonna have one percent of people who do not like me doing what I do because they think I'm bringing too many people to Southern Illinois. Yeah, I think tourism is a, is a huge is one of the it's biggest opportunities we have. Yeah, in in Southern Illinois, <coughs> um, yeah. and it, you know, there's 
little towns like Elizabethtown yeah. and Golconda. They Alto got the Pass. chocolate factory. Mm -hmm. Alto Pass. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Don't get me started. No. Redlam and Orchard. And Alto Pass has two hundred, maybe three hundred people, something yeah. like that. The Dirty South, which was the eighth annual, my first, really fun, brought seven hundred and fifty cyclists from all over the country, and it's become such a, a a favorite thing in Alto that the organizers told Alto, the town, that we're eventually going to have to move this thing because we want to keep growing it, but you, your town, it's it's going to just be too much for you. And Alto said, we will make it work. Yeah. Don't move it. Yeah. Keep yeah. keep increasing every year, and we Smart. will make sure it works because they see the benefits. Yeah. Absolutely. You can make also the gravel cycling capital of southern Illinois and bring I mean, that's a big circuit. That's a growing circuit. Yep. There's an organizer who helped organize the Dirty South, and he organized one in Kansas. Um, they call it the Dirty Kansas, but it's something else now. And it's a 200-mile course. You ride 200 miles in one day. I'm probably not going to do that <laughs> no, <one. yeah. laughs> And it brings thousands. Yeah. You know, yeah. That could that could be here yep. You know, if we really utilize it. Yeah, we just have to slowly grow up to that. Well, and that's that's what the the <coughs> mule riders yesterday yeah. were just talking about. How this is one of the best places Thousands to ride horses, yeah. and it's it's the scenery, man. The scenery down here is yep. just it's it's unrivaled in Illinois, and it's uh it's about we have over four hundred miles of trail. Really, that's a lot of trail. That's that a lot, lot of trail. That's yeah. awesome. A little bit more than a weekend stay. Yeah, yeah, a little bit more than a weekend. <laughs> See all, all that. We have so. four hundred miles of trail, and how many places do you have? Oh gosh, um, we have 37 now. There you go, you got 37 to stay yep. in, to keep coming back and staying in. Yep. And get all those trails. Um, if I could talk about it, the Shawnee yeah. Challenge. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wanted to mention that, kind of forgot. So, a couple of years ago, I went to Current River. To make a long story short, they had the Current River Challenge. And it was like, you canoe a little bit, and then you hike a little bit, and you canoe a little bit, and the park service gives you like a sticker when you complete it's free. You can do half of it this year, half of it this year. So I thought, <clears throat> let's bring that to Southern Illinois, you know. So I come back, and I had this idea of mountain biking at Lake Glendale Dixon Springs because they just opened the bike trails, hiking at your own pace. You could split it up through the year, and you get a sticker when you complete it. And I asked the Forest Service and IDNR and uh, Shawnee Mountain Bike Association, Friends of the Shawnee, and Southernmost Illinois Tourism if they'd be interested in partnering. All of them said yes. Southernmost Illinois took it completely yep. and just funded it all. You know, um, I'm a board member with them. They've been really vital to this area. So you can go to Southernmost Illinois Dot com, or you can even go to shawneechallenge.com mm -hmm. and it'll redirect you to their page and you just download an app. Yep. Um, and then when you go to these places, you check in. There's all sorts of different places you can go. You check in when you went there and you can get a sticker when you get, I think, two places. You get a free sticker. And then quarterly, they put your name into a drawing and you can win a bunch of Shawnee merch stuff. That's all free. Very cool. So That's all. Awesome. Definitely want to recommend that yeah southernmost does some awesome stuff yeah. down in this area yeah. another great resource to see what's going on down in southern illinois yeah um as and, well too. and I, i'm the father of that shawnee challenge but they've grew it to to be something more yeah you know? and i finally I, they've grown it so much i said just take my logo off and kind of make it your brand yeah and, mm -hmm. and i'm fine with that because i got it going and i'm happy it's going it's successful last year we had uh 1400 signups Wow. And then, that's awesome. I signed up. Yeah. 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 Same. <laughs> Same. Yeah. So. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, Sean, thank you so much, man, yeah. for, for coming on for our yeah. our first uh, our first podcast here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we look forward to having you on in future ones. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. All right. Well, well it's getting good. dark. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See you all. Yeah. Here. All right. Thank you, guys. <laughs>